in this, what we want to see in this region is, is towns and communities able to represent that uh, gentleman uh, and, and sort out his, uh, his needs. But as I was saying, in spite of the suspension of Parliament, the Prime Minister is still insisting a Brexit deal is possible. We're working incredibly hard to get a deal. There is a, the, the, the rough shape of a deal uh, to be done. As, as some of you may have seen, I, uh, I've myself been to talk to uh, various other EU leaders, particularly uh, in Germany, in France uh, and in Ireland, where we made a, a, a good deal of, of, of progress. I would say my, I'm cautiously optimistic. How, 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 is that a good enough? Um, characterization of all the way. I'm cautiously optimistic. Sky's correspondent Lewis Goodall has this assessment of where we are. Of course, the Prime Minister wants to talk about almost anything else other than Brexit, I think, at the moment. I absolutely believe him when he said uh, last week, what did he say? He said that uh, he really wishes he didn't have to go on about Brexit uh, so much. Well, so did his uh, predecessor. They didn't help her very much either. And clearly the questions surrounding Brexit, including the very controversial prorogation, dogging him um, up in uh, Rotherham today uh, as well, being heckled. And I think we can see a picture as well of the heckler who uh, was had to be dragged out uh, from the hall there. You can see really uh, quite profound uh, stuff. And no matter what he does, he doesn't seem to be able to get away from it. But there's another question that he couldn't get away from today as well in Rotherham, which is uh, not related to Brexit, but instead re with regards uh, regarding the uh, questions of uh, histo uh, allegations of sexual abuse uh, in the town, which in the past the Prime Minister had some rather colourful comments on. One of the questioners in the audience questioned him about those comments. Let's have a listen to what the question was and indeed what the Prime Minister in fact said in the LBC interview to which the questioner was referring. But a few months ago uh, you said in a radio interview um, that uh, lots of local police forces were spatting money up the wall. Is that something you still believe? Uh, on investigations of historic CSE? Uh, well, I, that's actually not what I said, but uh, what, what I certainly can say is I, I think all, all such uh, investigations have certainly uh, here are extremely important. And uh, but the point I was I was making is that uh, we do need to be backing our police uh, to be fighting crime, and that's why uh, we're investing in uh, twenty thousand police out on the streets and uh, putting about a, a billion more into policing. So I think an awful lot of money, an awful lot of police time that goes into these historic offences and all this malarkey and, you know, so, so, so 60 million pounds I saw was being spaffed up the wall on, you know, uh, some uh, investigation into uh, historic child abuse and all this kind of thing. You know, what on earth is that going to do to protect the public now? Well, there you are then. Uh, the Prime Minister being questions on his use of the rather vulgar term spaffed money up the wall. Uh, turns out, indeed, he did say that back uh, in March. Perhaps the Prime Minister forgot. Little school all there. And as we were saying, there are reports that Boris Johnson may be closing in on a deal on the Irish backstop after meeting both the Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, and the DUP's Arlene Foster uh, during the week. But Sky's Ireland correspondent, Stephen Murphy, put this question to Mr Varadkar this afternoon. Just on the reports that the DUP may be considering softening its position, are you aware of any significant movement on behalf of the DUP that would indicate a way forward? Have they been in touch with you? And what concessions could the Irish government offer in exchange if that were the case? I'm, I'm not aware of any change of position uh, by the DUP, but uh, you know the DUP can speak for themselves. Um, I don't think I should speak for them, nor I don't. I don't think they would like me to speak for them, so uh, I'm sure they'll answer any questions that they have themselves. Um, as far as the Irish government is concerned, our position hasn't